been providing services in Westmoreland County since 1976, so we've been doing it for more than 36 years. Uh, and the services range from hotline, which would be the initial way that people have contact with us usually in a crisis. We also do shelter for uh, battered women and their kids. We also provide shelter for men who have been in domestic violence situations. We have a lot of counseling services, we do therapy, and we go to court with people when they've been through a terrible situation like domestic or sexual violence. They can really use the support, and so we do that with them as well and go to the emergency department. So we do a lot of different things when people have been victimized so that we can help them get through that experience because it can be an incredibly difficult time and very confusing and, and it's something that people typically don't know what all is going to happen and so we're there to answer questions and to provide that support. The other thing we do is go out into the community and do a lot of education in the community because our mission is two part. First part of our mission is we want to help people who've been victimized and that's really important and that's a core thing that we do and have been known to do for a long time very well. But the other part of our mission is to stop the violence from happening and, and that's a kind of a more challenging part of the mission in the sense that it's just kind of hard for us to get our heads around sometimes of what that would actually look like. What's it going to take to stop this kind of violence from happening? And that, so we do a lot of education. We talk to kids. We talk to adults. We do uh, trainings to uh, professionals in other systems who interact with victims so they have an understanding of how that should be working and how that should happen. But we know we need to go deeper. We need to go broader, which is one of the reasons we're doing this kind of an event now. Walk a mile in her shoes is an opportunity for us to really go into the community and say, why does this happen? And what do we all need to be committing to and doing so that at some point in our future, we'll stop happening? So we put guys in high heels. As a, it's a symbolic gesture for them to say, we're making an effort to understand what a woman experiences in her life. Now, so the heels are a symbolic gesture to say, it's hard to walk in heels. It's an, kind of the idea is to say, and so we're trying to understand what a woman experiences every day in life when she has to be on guard at all times. Uh, and that's a, that's a difference for women compared to men. We have to worry about if we're walking on an elevator with somebody that we don't know, if we're walking to our car in a parking lot, or if we're at a bar and we walk away from a drink that's left on the bar, or you know, all the different ways that things can happen that is a different experience for women compared to men. And so we're asking men to say, I'll understand that and I'll make that commitment and, and I will put these shoes on to show my commitment and my willingness and my resolve to say I'll join with you and see what we can all do together to end gender violence. And we have 550 people registered, <clears throat> excuse me, with a lot of other groups that have told us they're coming this morning. So we're expecting probably close to 700, which is great, which is a wonderful support that comes from the community. So we expect to have 700 guys in high heels. Well, we expect to have 700 people. 700 people. We'll have probably half and half, and of the guys who come, we're expecting maybe 100 to 120 who will be actually in heels. And they're gonna and they're gonna do what? And they're gonna walk around a track for a mile, or we have the uh, abbreviated mile. But if it's just a little bit too much to get all the way around the mile track, that they can do the shorter mile, shorter walk. And so they come around the track as a group, collectively together, kind of bringing their feet together and their voices together. Um, to make the statement to the community that they are speaking out. And do you think they take that, they'll take that experience with them and back to the community? Yeah, they definitely will. We've been hearing that. So this is our third year. First year we had 300 people. Last year we had a little bit more than 400. This year we're looking at 700. So we know that it's really growing. We've heard from a lot of people that this is such a meaningful way for them to be involved in the mission, which is what we're looking for. We're always looking for ways for the community to be able to make that um, contribution with us in raising their voice and being a part of that solution to speak out about the root causes, which is really about marginalization and objectification of women and all the um, things that really put women on the fringe and that really uh, set us up for the kind of violence that happens. Yeah. We provide service to about 3,000 people each year, so and more than 10,000 hours of counseling. So we're busy and we know that what we're doing is probably just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what the need is. So we really want to get the word out about services and availability. Um, we've seen in some parts of our services, absolutely, we've seen a steady increase. Um, and in the request for things like education, we've certainly seen an increase in that. Um, so it, um, it it depends on the kind of service we're providing. It kind of ebbs and flows, but definitely there's more of a need. Um, and unfortunately, there's less funding. So we're having to get more creative about, yeah, really significantly less funding. So we're having to get more creative about how we provide service so that we don't cut back on the things that people really need us to be providing. We different pots of money federal. We're waiting to hear about cuts in federal. There's going to be there's consistently been cuts in state in some areas and other places. It's you know it's really kind of a mix. Sometimes things go up, some things go down. So. And what are you doing to kind of um, 
uh, counteract those costs. So. Doing as much as we can in the community to bring in more support from the community um, and looking for other funding opportunities through other grants, but a lot of it is going to have to come from the local community. And that's and the community has been wonderful. The community represents about 30% of our budget, which is great. So, um, so we're always looking for ways for community members to know how they can be involved and how they can help. So. For people who want to get involved in the work that Blackburn Center does, they can go to our website to get information about the things that are available for them to help with, so that's blackburncenter.org. It ranges from people wanting to commit to volunteering, which is kind of a big time commitment, but so important and so necessary, to acting on committees that we have, serving on committees, to collecting things that we need to keep our shelter running and we need to be providing to women who've been in uh, situations where they could really use some follow-up help. Um, there's a range of things that are available through the website that can get people connected in different ways. And sometimes there's things that people can do that aren't directly related to Blackburn Center, but are things that they can do themselves every day. One of the things we're doing today is uh, having men sign a pledge that's a pledge that are the 10 things that they can do to end gender violence. So we're asking men at our pledge signing booth to take that, um, to make that step to take that commitment to doing the things that really would make that difference. So there's a lot of different things that people can do at many levels. Um, that if it's long-term commitment, if it's something they can do in the short term, we want to provide all kinds of opportunities. What should they do? They can call the hotline, and our hotline is available 24-7. Um, the local number in Greensburg is 724-836-1122. We also have a toll-free hotline, which is 888-832-2272. So that would be a way to get directly in touch with us and um, we can talk to them about the things that we can provide and other ways to do safety planning and things that they can be.